Hi there, this is Product Manager Martin Brennan and welcome to this quick shot tutorial on performance replacement. Today we're going to be taking a common acting problem where the actor accidentally flicks his eyes towards the camera. Breaking this fourth wall and looking intentionally at the camera is a big acting faux pas, so sometimes we miss it in production and need to fix it afterwards. So the problem with this is eyes are very expressive and the audience is always going to go directly for them when viewing a performance. So replacing them has to be very accurate even in these tiny quick movements. So this is where Mocha comes in. So in this shot we can see that the actor is looking towards the camera around sort of frame 80 and in our final performance that we've done we have gone ahead and replaced that without it looking like anything is amiss. So what we need to do is track his eye area, mask it out, and then also insert a tracked freeze frame to replace the eyes so we don't see the problem anymore. So first of all, let's track the masks around his eyes. We're going to go into animation, track in Mocha AE, so this loads up Mocha AE with our new project dialog, and I'm just going to click OK. So we'll just overwrite the existing one. So we can see here that we've got our in and out points of the thing. I'm just going to go down here to zoom timeline, so only the section that was in AE is shown, just like so. So now we've got our 0 to 115 frames. So the first thing I'm going to do is find the point where he starts to look at the camera. So we can see here he's starting to peer around and I'm going to say that it looks like frame 80 is where he starts to look. So let's start tracking this first. So I'm going to come up here and come up to my X-Blind tool and I'm going to draw a fairly large shape around the eye section only. So just to capture the detail of those eyes. And we'll just smooth it out a little bit there using those handles. I'm right clicking that handle to smooth that out. And now I'm going to add another spline to the same layer using Add X-Spline to Layer. So let's click on that one, and we'll do another tracking shape around the other eye. So I'm just getting the detail I need to track these eyes as a beginning point. So I'm going to make sure that I track his face in perspective, and I'm going to use a minimum percentage pixels of 90 to make it reasonably accurate. And I'm just going to track forwards from this point because I don't really care about anything before here. I only care about the performance issue at frame 80 onwards. So let's just start tracking that forwards. We'll track one frame, track for two frames, track three frames. So we can see his face starting to turn around. He's still looking at the camera. And then he's back to normal. So that's pretty much all I need. Now it's a very subtle motion, but you can see that there's warp going on, you can see there's shear, that you can see there's perspective change as his face moves around. So Mocha is very handy for these very subtle motions that are happening in the shot. Even when it's such a small frame range, we're capturing a lot of change and motion going on. So now that we have our track done, we need to make sure that we set the in point of this track so that when we export, we don't get the additional keyframes at the beginning. So I'm going to come up here to my layer properties, and I'm just going to set the endpoint to where frame 80 begins, so that it cuts off the rest of the layer from the timeline. So now when I paste my tracking data, the tracking data is going to start from this point, not from the beginning. Now the other thing that we need to do is we're going to be warping a freeze frame of this exact frame. So we need to do something to the surface. So the surface tool is up here in our view controls. Let's just turn it on. So you can see our little blue rectangle here that's used to do our inserts when we paste them for corner pins inside After Effects. So we want to make this the same size as the dimensions of our footage here. So we can come over here to this thing called push surface to the corners of the image. It's also known as a line surface. And this is going to change it so that the corners of our surface hit the frame edges of the footage. So now when I scrub the timeline, you can see that it's rotating the frame over that period of time. So this is going to mean that the frame that we freeze back in After Effects will warp correctly when we paste it in After Effects. So let's do that now. First, let's name our layer, because we always should name our layer. So I'm going to call this I track. 
and I'm going to go ahead and export that tracking data to After Effects. So I'm going to just choose After Effects Corner Pin, which supports Motion Blur, and copy that to the clipboard. And I'm not going to close Mocha yet because we want to come back to Mocha to finish doing our masking. So let's switch over to After Effects and paste the data in. Okay, so back in After Effects, I'm just going to go back to frame 80. And I'm going to duplicate my layer using Command or Control D to add a new layer here. And I'm going to right click and come up to Time and enable Freeze Frame. And this is going to obviously freeze our frame at the frame 80 that I've selected. So the next thing I want to do is actually shorten this clip. So I'm going to press Alt and the bracket key to shorten my clip on one side. And let's just turn off the front layer so we can see him looking at the camera and then looking back again. So we want to go to about frame 86 and choose Alt and right bracket to clip that layer just to that area. So now I'll turn it back on we can see that we're getting a freeze frame and then we're going back to normal. So I want to paste my corner pin data to this freeze frame so that it matches his facial motion. So we're going to make sure that layer is selected and come up to edit and paste. So now you can see if I press the U key that our corner pin data is applied to the freeze frame. And when I scrub the timeline, you're going to see some weird warping, just like so. So obviously this is not the effect we want because we haven't yet masked out the eyes to match the shot. So we've got our main motion in place for our eyes now, and now the next phase is to mask them out so they match the rest of his face. Okay, back over in Mocha, we're going to draw a new layer to just isolate the area of the eyes. So I'm gonna turn off my eye track for this, and I'm gonna zoom in a little bit here so we can see his eyes a bit better. And I'm gonna draw a new X-Blind shape, and I'm very importantly going to capture as much around his eye as possible, including way below the eyes. And the reason for doing this is that when your eye moves, it adjusts the skin underneath the eye as well, and the top of the lid. So we need to make sure that when we capture his eye motion, we're capturing all the subtle skin and muscle motion around the eye as well, or it's going to look really odd when we do the masking. So I'm gonna grab this area here, and I'm gonna do the same on the other side, again using add x blind to layer. We're gonna come over and grab the underneath the eye again, just like that. And I'm gonna stop it around the bridge of the nose, and we'll smooth that out, just like so. And now we wanna take these two masks and link them back to our track. So let's call this layer eye mask and you go down to our link to track section and choose eye track so now it should move correctly with the mask so i'm going to just pull this out a little bit further there just like so so now that we've got our eye mask we can go back to after effects and paste in that data so i'm going to come down here to export shape data and we've got our mocha shape data for AE, and we're gonna click copy to the clipboard and go back to After Effects. So back in After Effects, what we wanna do now is come up to Layer, New, and create a solid. So this can be any color, let's make it just a blue solid. And I'm gonna come back to the starting frame of After Effects this time, and choose Edit, Paste, Mocha Mask. So the reason that I'm pasting at the beginning here is because we pad our keyframes for the shapes so that they match correctly throughout the entire shot. So if you've got multiple shapes when you're rotoing in Mocha, we add this additional padding to the start of the clip so that everything lines up. So you don't really care up to this point, you really only care up to the motion of frame 80 onwards, but we have to add this additional padding so that it lines up all your shapes when you're doing roto correctly. So we can do the same thing as we've done with the freeze frame here. On this frame I'm just going to press alt and left bracket and then that will cut out our masks for the area we don't need. So now what we need to do is that we've got our masked area set into the shot. I'm going to come down back to the freeze frame and I'm going to toggle over to my track mats and choose Alpha Matte Blue Solid 1. 
So that's going to mask out our freeze frame now. So let's just call blue solid so one something more useful, such as I mask. So now this mask is masking out our freeze frame here. So when I scrub, you're going to see that it moves along correctly and locks into place. Now there is a very subtle line here. If we look closely, I'm going to zoom in a little bit. So we can see here we're getting a little bit of a, a subtle line. It's pretty accurate at this phase. So if we want to, we can come back to our eye mask here and I'm going to press M twice to open all the mask preferences. And I'm just going to select mask feather for both of the eye masks and just feather it out a little bit to soften that out. So now when we come back and fit up to 100% and we let's just twirl up our eye mask so we don't see that anymore. Now when we actually scrub through the clip, you're going to see a quite accurate replacement where the blink is no longer visible. So if we turn off our eye for a second, we can see he's still flicking towards the camera. And if we turn it back on again, it's flicking back and looking correct. So this is a really, really quick method of getting rid of eye flickers in our shot. We just tracked the eye area to capture the overall motion where the eye flick happens. We then pasted in a corner pin on top of a freeze frame to warp the frozen frame back to the head motion. And then finally, we masked in that freeze frame so that it fit the eye area correctly, making sure that we captured the underneath the eye and above the eye as well, so that all that subtle skin motion around the eyes was covered. So if you have any questions about today's tutorial, please do go to our forums at imaginisystems.com under the support menu. You can also go to our Facebook page at facebook.com slash This has been Product Manager Martin Brennan, and thanks for watching.